So today's video is going to be something a little different, something that I've actually never really attempted to do before, but something that I've also really wanted to do for a while. I'm going to be building a boxcar kit. This is a, oops, wrong side, Union Pacific AAR 50 foot double door boxcar produced by, as I stated before, Accurail, made in the United States, uh, at least some of the United States. Uh, recommended for ages 14 and up. I'm sure some of you out there might be slightly younger that can make these. These are very, very well made, very affordable kits. Uh, for the most part, they don't generally go above $20. This one I got for actually less than this. There was a 20% off sale on this stuff, so I actually ended up getting it for about $13.70. I think is around what I paid for this one. So, yeah, we shall crack this open and get into assembling it. So you're gonna have to bear with me because I do not have a tripod, unfortunately, so it's gonna be a little difficult. And here's the interior of the kit. Into your body. And tucked inside are all of the parts, such as the chassis. These are very high quality, in my opinion. They feel great. They're definitely not 100% the most accurate detailing. Obviously, there's certain pieces that could be made better, like these are the tread on the roof is generally etched nowadays. These grabs are standalone, but they look pretty good. I have to say, they, they definitely don't look bad. Uh, seem better, but again, these are you're getting what you pay for with these. You know you're buying a budget, but also a very high quality kit. And this also fits into my era too, 1946. So there's the body, here's the chassis. That's interesting, it's actually molded in blue. Here are the doors, or some of them. Here's the rest of the doors. Yeah, these are molded in blue plastic, that's interesting. I'm not exactly sure what these are. Gonna have to look into that. Maybe it'll show me in the instructions. You have your couplers. Uh, a lot of people don't like the AccuRail couplers uh, because they're just a little finicky. They're kind of like Atlas couplers, more or less, but I haven't had any issues with them. They're fine. and it means I don't have to use Katie's. I know I prefer the Katie's, but these are all right. I can deal with these. And then you have your plastic wheel sets and trucks. So if you want to swap these out, you can. Again, I haven't had too many problems with AccuRail wheel sets. They don't look great because they're not, they're a bit of an odd color. The brown doesn't look that great, but again, they're fine. And then here is your coupler box and some other end details. I believe these are pretty much stock standard for most of their kits. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this might not end up getting used because obviously the car already has a brake wheel on this end. And that's it for that. Oh, and of course your steel weight, most important part to keep this thing on the track and running great. And they'll come out the instruction sheet. So here is the instruction sheet for uh, putting this whole thing together. And as you can see, that, this part right here where it says top, is what these are for. So I'm guessing these are used to help put the doors on. Which is interesting. Uh, it's kind of sad you can't open the doors, but it's all right. Could be worse. So that out of the way. Let's get into building this thing. So generally the first step I like to take is to install the weight onto the chassis. Um, basically just starting with the chassis in general. Uh, this will allow for this to dry while you work on the rest of the car. So it feels like that's gonna be a pretty snug fit. You do lose some of the interior detail, but again, this weight is also optional. I believe you can potentially put it in the top side of the car. 
and it'll also make the car very top heavy. So for my purposes, because uh, I'm going to model the car with the doors shut, I'm going to put it on the chassis part. So it looks pretty flat. start there. Looks like we'll also need to trim these little plastic bits off the side of the car. You might just be able to make them out, at least my thumb there. So, turn those off. And then I'll run over those with a file to smooth them out real fast. Uh, microfiles are very, very useful for this kind of stuff. Alright, with those all trimmed off, we can install the weights. Now, you can do this a number of ways, depending on what glue you want to use. I'm going to use this Loctite uh, Ultra Gel Control Super Glue, because that seems to work the best for this application. You don't need a lot, you just need a bit on the end here, and a little bit in the middle. And you could go to the step of scratching the surface up a little bit, but I haven't ever found the need to do that for these. All right, and a little bit of pressure. It should sit on there nice and tight. And now we'll flip that over and let that dry. And by the time we're done with this, this should be ready to go. I'm changing angles a little bit here. Now with the car upside down, I'm going to start adding on these details here. So we we'll want to start with some of the brake rigging. I'm going to start with this square piece right here. You know, maybe a X-Acto knife would be a better solution. This is a bit dangerous, by the way. I probably should have a tripod. <laughs> Just scored it enough to knock it off there. All right. And these don't really need filed too much because they're going to... I haven't had too many issues fitting these up. They're going to slot right into these little pieces. There's a, three little slots in the body here, and this is going to go into one of those three. Judging from pictures, I'm actually going to change the orientation here. That is going to go on this outside bit. To install these, I use Tester's Liquid Cement. Great stuff. It works awesome, but you don't want to use a ton of it because it'll run. And when it dries, it leaves this really nice gloss varnish that makes your models look ugly. Sometimes you can't help it, and sometimes you can sand them smooth. But generally, it's best to avoid using large amounts of it. Cutting off the brake cylinder, or one of yeah, brake cylinder. It's easier for me to do this off camera. That one was fine, but the rest of these are going to be a little tricky. And there we go. All the details are on the underside of the car. <laughs> That's it. Uh, the only thing left to, to worry about are the coupler box and truck pins, and we'll worry about those later. Next step for me is to assemble the couplers and trucks. 
And this is a fairly easy step for the most part. Uh, and generally the couplers I don't put in until after all of this is finished. So we'll just cut this open. Cut the first time. Now I did mention that the previous sprue had truck pins, uh, press fit truck pins. However, this comes with a set of screws. There are four screws in this kit. Uh, they're all the same length. One set is for the coupler box covers and the other set is for mounting the trucks. So we'll worry about that in a second. Uh, again, I'm not a big fan of the color of these wheels, but the quality of the mold is surprisingly good. They're very nice. I like them a lot. Profile's very well made. Again, I haven't had very many issues with these. Again, the color's not great, but the performance is fine. Um, and maybe I'll swap these out eventually for metal axles. Wheels, metal wheels, metal axles, because it'll work better. But pretty easy to put these together. They just... You just spread the truck apart slightly and pop the axles in. And as you can see, they roll incredibly freely for being plastic. Once they're under load, they're even better. There's one, and then we'll focus on getting the couplers out next. This is where I like to use the sprue cutter. Because it can get in there and Snip these off a lot easier. There. So this is the thumb side of the coupler, I guess is how you'd put it. And this is the knuckle side. And they will sit into the coupler box together just like that. So they're a little weird. They're a two-piece, very interesting two-piece coupler. Katie's are obviously easier to work with, but I prefer just using these for the moment. Now the tough part is getting the trip pin installed. That's the most tedious aspect because you can break these if you're not careful uh, pressing these in. So I like to add a little bit of super glue the very tip and then try to press these and sometimes I have to do it on the desk I'm gonna see if I can do it this time without yeah, I might have to do this off camera so after a little bit of off-camera work just had to file the ends of the trip pin up at the top and it's a little bit of super glue, it's slotted right in and it stays in place. So we'll just have to do it for the other one. Um, and then we will install these into the underside of the car. All right, both the couplers and the trucks are done. Now it's time to install them onto the chassis and cut the coupler box covers off already. So let's just line up like that. We'll need a Phillips head screwdriver for this, preferably magnetic, uh, because otherwise that will happen. And just slots right in there. Tighten it. Might not be able to tighten it all the way down. Uh, in some cases, I've had to back it off just a bit to allow the coupler to move freely. For example, it's way too tight there. So back it off just a little bit. There. It's a lot better. And now for the truck. Sometimes you may have to file the inside of the truck frame out. Or the truck pin hole out, so that way it will sit on the chassis properly. Oh, I got lucky on that one. And this will get tightened all the way down. Or not all the way. So you want your three-point suspension. So this one is going to be the, I believe this is the A end of the car. So this is going to be your single point so it can only turn side to side. And the rear one is going to be tightened down. Once I get the coupler on, we'll be tightened down just enough to 
sway side to side to allow for the so that the car doesn't wobble or tip over going down the track. And install the rear coupler here. Or B end coupler, my apologies. And there's an A and B end. Like I said, this one is not going to get tightened down all the way, so if the truck has a little bit of side-to-side -side play like this. And with that, the chassis is done. At this point, the super glue should be set up enough that it's not the weight's not going to go anywhere. Alright, moving on to the body. This is going to be a relatively simple one. It's just putting doors on. Uh, they already installed the tread and the brake wheel for you so all you got to do is worry about this so how this works is this guy is actually going to sit right inside the car and support the doors so that's going to sit there all i need to do is put some glue on the ends again we'll use, we'll use the model cement this time probably add a little bit more once I press this on there. All right. We'll let that set up, we'll put the next one on, and then we'll put the doors on. All right, the door braces are in. I've kept the doors off the sprues. Last step of the process is to install them. And these are going to be, I think the process for these are going to be using the tester's glue and applying a small layer to the braces. doors completely installed we can finally mount this thing to the body or the body to the chassis now the issue that i ran into is that these doors don't necessarily want to fit side by side so you might have to cut the little tabs that they sit on or uh, file them i just had to file one of them this side went together okay the other side wasn't quite as smooth but they look fine now. Should be tight. Now it's time to mount everything up. Oh boy, this is big. Doing this one-handed is not the best idea. Now, this is merely the test fit because I will need to run a bead of glue along the underside of the car to get everything to stay put. I thought for a second it wasn't going to come undone. If that was the case, that would be awesome, but since it didn't hold itself together, I'm going to run a small bead of glue down the sill here. Here we 
gentle squeeze. There we go. So that is how to build an Accurail boxcar kit. And that's more or less the same for any Accurail kit. They're, again, they're pretty easy to assemble. And when they're done, they look halfway decent. Certainly not the most detailed cars I own, but it is one of the nicest. Still one of the nicest, I should say. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you think I did a good job and if I should continue to do stuff like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.